neighborhood buzzing after a man shot and killed while he was lying in bed. Katrina Weber tells how neighbors are reacting to the news. A new poll is asking Bear County residents to grapple with a hot button issue. How they responded when asked about defending the police. And Hurricane Delta has weakened, but expected to re-strengthen over the Gulf. We've got the latest coming up. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. People in a southeast side neighborhood still reeling after waking up to a crime scene this morning. San Antonio police say someone shot and killed a man inside his home on Lassus Boulevard just off of South New Braunfels Avenue. As Katrina Weber reports, the victim himself was still in bed at the time. Just as most people here were opening their eyes, San Antonio police were opening a murder investigation. Officers at the scene in the 2900 block of Lasses told us a man inside this home was shot just around 7 this morning by someone who he knows. Right now, evidence does in indicate that there was no forced entry. Uh, right now, we are trying to uh, put the pieces together. Early on, though, investigators told us they were looking for a young teen, the boyfriend of the victim's sister. They say relatives told them he arrived at their home, then without a word, shot the victim who's in his 20s. Based on what other investigators told us, it seems that the victim didn't even have a chance to get out of bed before he was shot. They say it looks like he did get up afterward, though, and collapsed on the bedroom floor. The father of the victim did hear gunshots, which led him to the victim. Neighbors didn't hear anything and were taken by surprise. I woke up, you know, of course, getting my kids ready for school. And my girls were like, oh, my gosh, there's ambulance across the street. Tabitha Farris says she knows some members of the family well, and the murder has her stunned. It's crazy to think how close to home it can be. You know, you just never know. It's got to protect your babies. Police spent some time searching the neighborhood for the suspect, who they say was last seen running from the home along with the teenage girl. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. New at noon, a San Antonio police officer facing another traffic related suspension. It's the second time in three months that Officer Justice, Marcus Justice rather, crashed his vehicle earlier this year on Lanark Drive. Then he waited to contact a supervisor. He was suspended 10 days for that. This is according to discipline paperwork that was released to case at 12. In a separate case, though, justice was suspended 15 days in June after investigators determined the off duty officer fled from a traffic stop and reached speeds of 112 miles per hour. He was suspended for 15 days again following that incident. Years after a man was found dead on the west side, the search for justice continues and now police are offering a cash reward, hoping to get new information on the case. Police say 37 year old Angelo Palindo was killed back in October of 2016. His body found in the 1500 block of North Sabina Street near West Laurel. At the time, witnesses told officers they heard several gunshots and they reported seeing a gray colored vehicle leaving the scene. If you know something that can help police with their investigation, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. You could get a cash reward if the information you provide leads to an arrest. A man accused of being involved in a deadly crash, then taking off, now facing some charges. Police say that they were able to track him down after he took a selfie and sent it to someone. The crash happened late Monday night on Loop 410 near Palo Alto Road. According to police, 41-year-old Orlando Martinez and the victim were both racing on motorcycles before they both lost control and crashed. 27-year-old Mario Garcia died as a result. Police say Martinez left the scene before officers arrived. Officers were able to find Martinez after he sent a picture of his injuries to a friend who then sent that picture to police. The charges Martinez faces include racing on a highway, causing death and failure to stop and render aid. Voters in Bear County may not be in favor of defunding the police. However, they do want some changes to take place. That's according to the latest Bear Facts case at San Antonio report poll. According to the poll, 619 registered Bear County voters were asked if the San Antonio Police Department should be defunded. The results showed that 76% of voters said they were against defunding compared to 20% who said they approved, while 24% said they didn't know. The poll also asked voters if funds going to SAPD should be reallocated to fund other programs like mental health and substance abuse treatments. 
The results showed that 51% of voters agreed while 47% disagreed and 2% said they didn't know. Those are just some of the topics covered in the latest Bear Facts poll. Read the full results on our website, ksed.com. All you got to do is go to the Bear Facts page on the website. A bit of encouraging news when it comes to the coronavirus pandemic here. There was another drop in the seven day average in Bear County. We now stand at 126. There was also another drop in hospitalizations. 206 COVID-19 patients are in the hospital, 82 are in the intensive care unit, and 41 people are on ventilators. And one more person died from COVID-related complications. And while those numbers show a downward trend, we're not out of the woods yet, and that's why taking steps like wearing a mask is so important. And tomorrow, businesses in our community will get the chance to pick up some free masks. Bear County will be handing out 250,000 masks to local businesses tomorrow, starting at 10 o'clock in the morning. They'll end it at 1 p.m. Each business will get 100 masks, and they will be distributed on a first-come, first-served basis. County officials will be set up at the Freeman Coliseum Exhibitor Barns. That's at the Gate E entrance off of AT&T Parkway. Now, in order to get the mask, you have to pre-register online, and you can do that on bear.org. A new pilot program at SAWS could help with those high water bills. It aims to identify water leaks faster. The automated metering program approved this week. SAWS says it will improve meter reading and customers will be able to monitor their water use in near real time. The program will be tested out in a few areas in March of next year. If it's successful, SAWS expects a full launch to begin in 2022. It would take four years to complete. SAW says the pilot phase will cost $7.1 million. So to come this half hour, the Houston Astros just one went away from making it to the league championship series again. Larry Ramirez with highlights. It's been a busy hurricane season, and we're once again keeping an eye on a storm that's already bringing nasty weather to some folks in Mexico. We're tracking Delta after the break. Delta strengthening from a tropical depression to a Category 4 hurricane in just 36 hours then hammering the Mexican resorts area, resort areas of Cancun and Cozumel. Here is ABC's Victor Aquindo reporting from Mexico City. Hurricane Delta hammering the eastern tip of Mexico this morning. I just spoke with somebody riding out the storm from their home in Cancun. They tell me the winds are so loud, it sounds like two trains passing along both sides of their house. The storm intensified from a tropical impression to a Category 4 hurricane in just over 36 hours. Winds reaching 145 miles per hour on Tuesday, taking aim at the popular resort towns of Cancun and Cozumel. Mass evacuations taking place ahead of the storm's landfall. Residents boarding up, preparing for the storm. A group of workers seen securing a small plane, tying it down. The airport packed with people, hoping to catch one of the last flights out before it shut down. Vacationers stuck without a flight home, forced to ride out the hurricane in shelters, including Ben Barnes and his girlfriend Aaron Silvers. Once they arrived, they found rows of pool lounge chairs turned into makeshift beds. Tens of thousands of guests had to evacuate their hotels. A very long morning ahead for everyone on the eastern tip of Mexico. And of course, all eyes on Hurricane Delta as it approaches the Gulf Coast. Victor Okendo, ABC News, Mexico City. And I guess we should mention that actually Delta was downgraded quite a bit. Yeah, it went down to a Cat 2 storm, but it's starting to reemerge back out in the Gulf of Mexico. It is going to strengthen once again. And they've changed the track. The models have changed the track just a little bit. We're going to show you that coming up after the break. But first, let's look at the aquifer. It's down about half a foot to 660.4, continues to drop. And your pollen count looks very similar to yesterday's. Ragweed's in the moderate category. Mold is low. We've got that update on Delta coming up. It's like a weather, like carbon copy. Same thing day after day after day. Just beautiful. Day nice. after day after day. <laughs> We're okay with that. It, it, it's been a good stretch. There, there's no doubt about it. It's just the lack of rainfall that's starting to get True. to us. You know, that's that's the flip side to it. We may get a couple of showers across the eastern counties on Friday, but it's not going to be much. And I doubt we get any here in San Antonio. So we're going to keep the dry streak going. 
Of course, Delta is the big story. We can see it here on the visible satellite picture very nicely. It is now starting to reemerge out into the Gulf of Mexico. It, it had been a pretty compact storm. I think this thing's going to grow a little bit. That's going to contribute to some pretty significant storm surge down the line for parts of Louisiana, it looks like. And you can see some of the clouds that have banked up against the Texas coast. Some of those clouds may work in tomorrow. So we may see a little bit more cloud cover next couple days, but rainfall just it doesn't look like we'll get any here. There's a little closer look at uh, Hurricane Delta and it does look a little bit better organized now that it's back out over water. Winds at 105 miles per hour gusting to 125 and it's moving northwest at about 17 miles per hour. So this thing is moving pretty quickly. It should strengthen back to a Cat 3 storm and this is Thursday evening. You'll notice it's near Texas, but not close enough to cause any direct impacts. You'll see the surf picked up. Uh, you'll have a rip current along the Texas coast, so something to keep in mind next couple days. But it will start to turn. Category 3 storm Friday morning. Winds at 120 miles per hour, and then eventually we're expecting this to make landfall somewhere between the Texas-Louisiana border and, say, uh, Baton Rouge, Lafayette area. That's where this storm is expected to come on shore. It'll quickly weaken, but not before, again, putting out a, a pretty good storm surge, quite a bit of rain, and, of course, those strong winds as well. Hurricane watches have now been posted from about Port Arthur all the way uh, close to New Orleans, and then you've got tropical storm watches on either side of that, which uh, do include Galveston, although, again, Galveston's probably not going to see uh, any big effects from this. Uh, you look at the probability of hurricane winds, so the colors correspond here to a percentage. And we're talking about a 60 to 70 percent chance in this area here, so central Louisiana, of seeing hurricane force winds with this storm. And this will change as it gets a little bit closer, but this is the general idea. Here's a look at the future cast, and it does show this storm working through the Gulf. It tries to throw a few showers in our direction on Friday. This is at 5 o'clock, and then it'll quickly move off to the north and east. High pressure is going to build in on the back side of this thing, and that's going to crank temperatures up. That may be the biggest side effect we get from this storm is the heat over the weekend. 93 on Saturday, potentially mid 90s, and then we could go upper 90s on Sunday. We could be approaching some records when it comes to that heat. We've gone 15 days now without rain. Today would make 16, and that means we're putting together a pretty good streak here. Uh, 15 days ranks up there for this year. This is the rain street rain free streaks we've seen in 2020. Uh, we had a pretty good one from June to July, 29 days without rainfall at the airport. That is and then August 4th to August 21st, we went 18 days. So uh, some rain would be nice. It's just really not in the cards at this point. And we look outside right now. We've got mostly clear skies, 81 degrees at the airport, 79 stints and 82 Kelly, 81 and rain off and light winds across the board. A few high clouds trying to drift in from the south and west. Uh, but it's not going to do a whole lot for us today. These are pretty thin clouds. 83 New Braunfels, 84 right now in Seguin. You got 83 in Castroville, 83 down there in Pleasanton, 81 Carrizo Springs, and a warm 86 in Catua. Dew points, eh, they're up a little bit. We're seeing some low 60s. It's still not terribly muggy out there, and those dew points will more or less stay in that range even into the weekend before we get our next front, which looks like it'll be late Monday into Tuesday. So forecast for today, 85 degrees by 2 o'clock. We'll be up around 90, very similar to yesterday, mostly sunny. Do expect a few more clouds next couple days as that hurricane gets a little bit closer to the Texas coast. Again, no impacts here, but just some cloud cover. 89 Thursday, 88 Friday, slight chance of a shower, mainly east of I-35, and then some big-time heat this weekend, mid-90s, both Saturday and Sunday. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Earlier, we did a story on the Bear Facts KSAT San Antonio report poll, and I think on our graphic down below us, we had the word defending, and it should have been defunding the police. 76% say they were against defunding the police in that poll. So if you saw that defending, it should have said defunding. So we just want to make that uh, correction for you. But speaking of defending. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> um, you know, if the Cowboys played in the Big 12, their defense would be great. Yeah. I'll tell you what. That, that is just a really bad example. <laughs> I can't take, I cannot take credit for this, but a national sportscaster called them the Dallas Cowboys because there's no D in oh. Dallas. Yeah, coming up, the Dallas defense just getting beat up these days. They've allowed 146 points so far. Is it due to a lack of effort? Plus, the Lakers were inspired last night by a text from LeBron. Coming up.
as a, for the, the way that the ball flies. I don't play here all year, so I don't know um, if this is normal, if it's not normal. Well, a Springer dinger is normal. Astros' George Springer hit two of them yesterday in big board sports. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys defensive coordinator Mike Nolan could be in line to lose his gig if he doesn't turn things around ASAP, especially after Hall of Fame quarterback Troy Aikman roasted the Dallas D for their performance in the 49-38 loss to the Cleveland Browns. Aikman called the performance embarrassing, giving up a club record 307 yards rushing, adding, quote, I just didn't think the effort was there, end quote. Well, Nolan disagrees. There's been no effort issues, in my opinion. I think the effort's been good. The, the, the issue that we had was more technique-wise, in my opinion. Uh, and when one technique breaks down for one player, obviously it, it affects another player next to him. And, uh, and we did not, you know, we didn't play very well, obviously. I'm not scared of the issue at all. We played very poorly. That's just, I mean, uh, I hope we don't have to live through another one of those. Um, but if we don't get things corrected, it could happen. Cowboys owner Jerry Jones confirming that it looks like they've lost offensive lineman Lyle Collins to season-ending hip surgery and Joe Looney is out with a knee injury. Behind 50 combined points from LeBron James and Anthony Davis to go along with a clutch 15 from Contavious Caldwell Pope, the Lakers are one step closer to the NBA championship. LeBron had 28 points, 12 rebounds, and one huge assist before the game tip yesterday. Lakers win 102-96, taking a 3-1 series lead. So LeBron woke up from his pregame nap and sent a text to his teammates, and it said, must win. I felt like for me personally, this was one of the biggest games of my career. And um, just wanted to relay that message to my teammates, the type of zone I was in, the type of moment it was, because I just know how great of a team that we're playing against. Jimmy Butler led Miami with 22 points. Game five is Friday night at eight, and Miami is looking to stay alive. The ball is flying out of Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, and so far it's benefiting, benefiting the Houston Astros big time. Yesterday in game two of their ALDS with the Oakland A's, George Springer hit two home runs with three runs batted in to help the Astros beat the A's 5-2, taking a two games to none lead in the best of five series. As Springer says, he's just having fun. You know, one, again, um, <clears throat> I'm just trying to help the team win. And Two, I mean, it's the playoffs, and you know, it, this is this is supposed to be fun. Um, you got to enjoy it because, like I, I've, I've said before, and and I believe it is, you don't know if if you're ever going to get back here. So the times that that you are here, you might as well try to have fun. All right, game three is today at 2:35 p.m. local time. But look at that great play by Jose Altuve. I just hope he didn't hurt any of those cardboard cutouts out there in the outfield when he hit those home runs. <laughs> No scrambling for the ball either. Do they get to keep the baseball? I, I, yeah, I don't know. It's just like hanging out there. Ursula's just putting up with us right now. Jeez. Always. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> hey, coming up tonight, candidates gearing up for the big vice presidential debates. What steps crews are taking to keep everyone safe? That's coming up in our next half hour. The truth is out there, and so are better planets. Why researchers say when it comes to the rest of the universe, the Earth is not necessarily the best planet. In just a few hours, Vice President Mike Pence and Senator Kamala Harris are going to be taking their places on the debate stage at the University of Utah. Crews in Salt Lake City are taking extra precautions ahead of tonight's vice presidential debate. They installed panels on stage, which will serve as a barrier to protect the candidates and the moderator. And the candidates will be 12 feet apart when they're on the stage. Anyone in the small audience who refuses to wear a mask will be asked to leave. These extra steps came after Senator Harris's team asked for more precautions to be taken. Harris and Pence are expected to clash over several major issues, including the coronavirus crisis. Harris shared where her focus will be tonight. Meanwhile, Pence says he's ready and welcomes the challenge. I guess the biggest thing, just to be candid with you, is to be prepared for what is, I think, very likely to be a series of untruths. And we're looking very much forward to the vice presidential debate. The stakes in this election have never been higher. You can watch the debate tonight at 8 o'clock right here on KSAT 12. We will also be live streaming it on KSAT.com. 
Meanwhile, as Election Day approaches, many may be wondering about mail-in ballots here in San Antonio. Mail-in voting has different procedures that voters should be aware of before sending in their ballot, and only those who qualify can participate in mail-in voting. Some include those who are sick or disabled, 65 years of age or older on Election Day, and those who will be away from their county during Election Day and early voting. The deadline to request a mail-in ballot is Friday, October 23rd, Right now, only 10,000 of the 91,000 ballots that have been mailed to voters who requested them have been turned in. You can find more information about mail-in ballots, like what to do if you want to change your vote and how to track and fill out your ballot right now on KSAT.com. Meanwhile, at the White House, more staffers have tested positive for COVID-19, raising the question of the next debate between the president and former Vice President Joe Biden. It is scheduled for next Thursday. President Trump's doctor says he is making progress in his recovery. In fact, the president tweeted that he's eager to get back on the campaign trail. Even so, he spent the all spent all day Tuesday out of sight at the White House. Over at the Pentagon, almost all of the members of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, meantime, are quarantining at home after the Vice Commandant of the U.S. Coast Guard tested positive for COVID-19. And top White House aide Stephen Miller also testing positive as well. Coronavirus infections are still on the rise. There were 43,563 new cases of COVID-19 reported in the U.S. yesterday. That's 4,000 more than the previous day. There have now been more than 7.5 million cases reported in the U.S. overall. The national death toll is near 211,000. President Donald Trump says he's no longer talking about another stimulus bill until after the election. Instead, the president has asked Congress to approve additional assistance for airline and small business aid programs. We'll re-engage after the election, as the president said. I think we do need another rescue package. The president says he wants Republicans to focus on approving Judge Amy Coney Barrett to the Supreme Court instead of the stimulus package. Live look outside with live cam. Another pretty day out there. We're going to get up into the upper 80s again, Justin. Uh, maybe even 90. Uh, we got up to 89 yesterday. We'll be right in that range again today, 89, 90, somewhere around there. It's going to be another warm afternoon. Take a look at this great picture on our KSAC Connect. That is a moonflower, I believe. A beautiful shot taken out of New Braunfels. Blooming this time of year. We like to see those pictures of the plants. Very beautiful. And it's been a beautiful stretch of weather uh, going on. And we're going to keep that going today. 81 degrees at the airport right now. 79 Stinson, 83 Pleasanton, 76 at Canyon Lake. Feels pretty good out there right now. We'll get a little toasty this afternoon. We've had a couple of clouds work their way through some high clouds. Not causing any issues. A little significance, but uh, you'll notice there's quite a bit of cloud cover out in the Gulf of Mexico. Some of this may try to work in tomorrow, so we'll probably see a little bit more cloud cover on your Thursday. But still, rain for the most part stays out of the forecast today. Again, up around 89 by 4 o'clock, 85 by 6 o'clock, down to 80 at 8 o'clock. Light and variable winds. Delta still roaring out there. We're going to have another look at where the winds are right now. That's coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. When it comes to 2020, a lot of people are saying they're over it. They may even be done with planet Earth in general. There is some good news in this department. A new study says there might be better planets out there than ours. What makes them better suited for life? Still ahead. And the Breckenridge Eagles finally back on the practice field and they are flying high with excitement. The CDC urging Americans to celebrate Halloween safely in order to limit exposure and slow the spread of COVID-19. But many families are still wondering how this holiday is going to look this year. Coming up, ways you can take part in the fun and be safe. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. Sirius XM is working hard to keep its star player on the roster. The streaming service is reportedly in talks with radio legend Howard Stern to renew his contract at a rate of $120 million a year. This would top his previous contract. Now, according to Bloomberg, Stern's contract is set to expire at the end of this year. 
Netflix will begin testing its latest feature that will allow viewers to turn off the pop-up box. Netflix saying viewers will have the option to select play without asking again. When the box pops up, which will allow Netflix subscribers to binge their hearts out without any interruption. And move over Instagram, TikTok is taking your spot. According to a report published by Piper Sandler, 29% of teens say the short form video app is their favorite social platform with only 25% favoring Facebook's Instagram. This new information comes just months after the same report showed TikTok was the third favorite app among teens. And that's your Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Hannah Doba from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. COVID-19 affecting a lot of traditions, forcing people to make changes to keep everyone healthy. And spooky season won't be immune. Halloween will look a little different this year. However, as CNN's Mandy Gaither explains, there are ways to enjoy the holiday safely. In guidelines released by the CDC, door-to-door -door trick or treating runs a high risk when it comes to the coronavirus. But for some parents, letting go of a tradition can be hard. And I think the, the most important part for us is trying to get some sense of normalcy, but also reducing risk. If you do plan to get dressed up, the CDC says don't substitute a Halloween mask for a cloth mask unless it's made of two or more layers of breathable fabric covered covering your mouth and nose without gaps. And don't wear a costume mask over a cloth mask. The CDC says it can be dangerous because it can make it hard to breathe. Instead, consider using a Halloween themed cloth mask. When it comes to handing out candy, pre-packaged baggies may have a lower risk of spreading the virus compared to children going door to door, according to NC State Food Safety Specialist Benjamin Chapman. Uh, as opposed to all hands going into a bowl or more risky, someone actually placing food, uh, you know, candy or, or treats directly into a bag. Chapman says food and food packaging have a low risk of virus transmission. And really the best risk management that kids can do and parents can do is just washing hands after handling the packaging before eating. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. You know, whatever happens, just as long as they got some candy corn. Candy corn? That's it. I don't care about as that. What you worry about? Leftover candy. That's that's always the trick in our house. There you go. Yeah, stash it away. Uh, anyway, 81 degrees so far today. The low this morning, 63. It was it was a nice start. It's already warming up pretty quickly though. The record is 99. Set back in 1937. We'll be close to 90 today, so nowhere near the record. But this weekend, we may be challenging some records when it comes to the heat. We'll take a look at that weekend forecast coming up. Researchers say when it comes to the rest of the universe, the Earth is not necessarily the best planet. According to a published study, scientists have found two dozen planets outside of our solar system that may be better for life. They have labeled the planets super habitable. Some of the planets are older, a little larger, slightly warmer than Earth. However, the 24 top contenders for super habitable planets are all, well, they're more than 100 light years away. So it'd take a while to get there. So if you <laughs> are interested in, wow. in giving up on planet Earth in 2020, you're going to need a pretty good spaceship. I was going to say, how long does it take to get 100 light years, Justin? Yeah, long that's time. a how, how, how long? Question. 100 light years. I like it. That was a good answer, though. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's more, yeah, a long way away, okay? It's, it's not going to happen yet. We can't move from Earth yet. Maybe sometime in the future. It'll happen. Good to know there's a place to go. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Uh, well, you know what? Go outside right now because it's nice. Uh, 81 degrees. We've got uh, partly cloudy skies, uh, calm winds, really a pretty nice day underway. And uh, temperatures around the area, 84 Holotus, 85 Rio Medina, 83 Tarpley, 84 in Bandera, 83 in New Braunfels. So warming up pretty quickly and uh, 84 out there in Del Rio, 86 in Catula. That's one of the warm spots this afternoon. Dew points in the 60s. So there's a little humidity out there. Not much, but watch what happens as we go forward. Uh, in time here. So this is this afternoon drops off into the 50s. We can deal with that. And then tomorrow we start to see the humidity surge back in with some of that tropical moisture just off the coast.
but we're going to see a, a sort of a, a definition here between uh, where we get some pretty humid conditions and really dry air. And San Antonio is going to be sitting right on that line. So right now it's showing dew points around 60 with some high dew points off the east and low dew points off to the west. We'll see how it shakes out, but there may be a little bit of more humidity tomorrow. And even as we get into Friday and even potentially the weekend, the dew points may try to step up a little bit. There is some cloud cover off of the Texas coast. And uh, you can see it there, a little bit of rain uh, east of Brownsville. Some of these clouds may try to work in tomorrow. Some of them still think oh, we'll see sun. So some partly cloudy skies in your Thursday. That'll be the one change. We'll see some clouds on Friday, too. And this is all sort of uh, associated with what we got going on down here with Delta. Uh, is This storm looks to be a little bit bigger now. It was a very compact storm for a while. And a Category 2 storm, winds at 105 miles per hour, gusting to 125, made landfall near Cancun earlier this morning. And now it's uh, going to reemerge into the Gulf, probably re-strengthen some into a major hurricane. By Thursday evening, winds could go as high as 120 miles per hour, according to the Hurricane Center. And the latest track takes it up towards Louisiana. Friday morning, we're talking about winds at 120 miles per hour. It may weaken a little bit right as it's making landfall with some cooler waters right along the coast. And then it will weaken very quickly once it moves inland. Storm surge is something we're, we're worried about with this storm. There, there's going to be some significant storm surge, we think. And a hurricane watch has been posted from Port Arthur there, far east Texas, all the way across to the Louisiana coast here, including Morgan City. Some of the latest estimates on storm surge, I was just looking at the Hurricane Center, potentially up to 11 feet in some cases. So this is going to be a pretty huge storm surge. And this is an area that's already uh, been dealt a hit by Hurricane Laura and a couple other systems so far this year. So not good news. Here's the probability of hurricane winds. Uh, the probability that these areas will receive winds of 74 miles per hour, 74 miles per hour or greater, and there's a high likelihood of that there along the Louisiana coast. So this is the area that we're most concerned with. As we look at the future cast for us, yeah, throw some clouds in our direction. Maybe, just maybe a shower on Friday. I think it's probably going to be east of I-35 if we see anything at all. And then on the back side of this, high pressure is going to build in, and we're going to get heat. Uh, mid 90s possible on Saturday. We could go upper 90s on Sunday. Uh, that's going to be approaching some records. So heads up there. It's going to be a hot weekend. Forecast for today: 85 degrees, 2 o'clock, 89, 4 o'clock. We'll be up around 90 with mostly sunny skies, and then look for uh, 89 Thursday, partly cloudy, 88 Friday. 20% chance for shower mainly out to the east, and then uh, mid to upper 90s over the weekend. It does cool down next week. We should get a weak frontal boundary, or at least a a decent front coming in Monday night uh, into Tuesday, guys. Is that what you call Indian summer? Not quite. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> that just kind of struck me a little funny. No. I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's tough when you get, exactly. It's tough when you go up against the top team and you're yeah. still looking for a, a healthy quarterback on your team that can run the show, right? Yeah. Um, we don't know if Frank Harris is going to start or not at BYU. There's a chance that he can. But his backup quarterback, Josh Adkins, who started at UAB, suffered a broken collarbone, but it looks like he could return the season. And the Tennessee Titans game Sunday is in jeopardy. we got the details coming up. have another tall task ahead trying to be BYU on the road the 15th ranked team in the country BYU was the last second add to the Roadrunner schedule when teams started bowing out during the COVID-19 pandemic what makes it more challenging for UTSA is that they're coming off their first loss of the season and the loss of transfer quarterback Josh Atkins to a broken collarbone head coach Jeff Trailer gave us an update yesterday we got good news uh, he is going to have surgery but it looks like it'll just be four to six weeks uh, where we're afraid it might be a little bit longer than that. So uh, I know that doesn't sound like good news, but it, it is good news because he's not done for the year. Frank Harris continues to work on his return from a knee injury, but Trailer saying he looks bitter. Lowell Narcisse has been promoted ahead of Jordan Weeks on the quarterback depth chart. Kickoff against undefeated BYU will be at 2.30, and the game will be nationally broadcast on ESPN2. The 
the San Antonio Independent, South San, and Edgewood School District started workouts this week for fall sports, including football. The delay caused by COVID-19, with those three districts taking the more conservative approach with the infectious rate now down below 5%. Over at Brackenridge High School, it's a special time knowing this is the final season for Willie Hall's Eagles head coach. He's retiring after 37 years of Brack, the last 25 as their head coach, albeit in a shortened season. That's because the Eagles won't be allowed to play their first game until the week of October 29th. It's definitely not your traditional senior year, but you know, football players, we learn to adapt to everything. So it's really a good experience. Like we're happy to be back. It's been, it's been much too long. We've been ready for this. I'm just glad these uh, seniors are gonna have an opportunity to get to play their last season because it, it'd have been devastating on those kids if, if it didn't happen. All right, high school volleyball last night at Paul Taylor Fieldhouse. Warren facing Holmes. Warriors up two sets to one, but the Huskies keeping it close in the fourth. Ariana Martinez over to Aubrey Salazar off the blocker and out. Holmes takes a one point lead, but the Warriors close out the match. Viviana Solis gets the dump shot to fall. Warren wins it three sets to one. They're now five and one in district play. More highlights and reaction on our website. In the WNBA, the number two seeded Seattle Storm beat the number one seeded Las Vegas Aces last night, 92-59, to win the WNBA championship three games to none. The 33-point margin of victory was the largest in WNBA finals history. Seattle forward Brianna Stewart won her second WNBA finals MVP award. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. And just when it looked like things were improving for the Tennessee Titans, they had two players test positive for COVID-19 today. According to reports, after two consecutive days of negative tests, the Titans were hopeful they could return to their facility today. Under NFL rules, that can no longer happen. So this puts Sunday's game against the Buffalo Bills in jeopardy. Wow. Man, that's a lot of guys. That's over 20. Yeah, I think it's 22, Something 24, like that, yeah, man. in that area. Wow. All right, Larry, thanks. Huh? You know, we're all wondering what Halloween's going to look like this year. <laughs> well, Mike and Fiona might have the answer that you've been looking for, and they're about to show it to you. Let's head outside and see what they're working on today on SA Law. So everybody's wondering what Halloween's going to be like this year. We're going to make it extra fun, and we've got some great ideas. Oh, yes. We are helping create a Halloween adventure in your backyard, okay, or in your home. Yep. Five different stations, okay, brought to you by our friend Adina Anderson, okay, because she's the brains behind all of these, but we're going to show you one of those fun activities right now. So we're taking this can, and this is for a game later on, and we're making a mummy can. So take your hot glue gun, just little tiny dots, strips of paper, paper towel, make sure you wear band-aids if you don't want to burn your fingers. And this is one of those crafts where you don't have to be perfect. The less perfect you are, the better, and you end up with something that looks like that. Yes, and the great thing is, you know, this is something for every member of the family. The kids can have fun too, and all you have to do is find some googly eyes, glue them on there, and boom, there it is. There's your canned mummy. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, because we have some spooky STEM activities for the kids. So some educational crafts that you can do with them at home to get them into the Halloween spirit. Okay, speaking of Halloween spirit, you gotta have a costume. Gibson Costume, our great friends, they have got everything you can think of. Oh, what are you gonna be this year? I haven't decided yet. Hmm, I'll <laughs> That's where that. you can figure it out. Yep. Oh yes, and Jen is out at Max and Louie's and she's gonna try something she's never tried before. Corned beef sandwich. Speaking of that, what's a food that you have never tried but would like to? Find out a little bit later on on SA Live.